If you've lived with type 1 diabetes long enough, you might have had to go into the hospital for something completely unrelated to your diabetes. And you realized in that moment that the people in the hospital who don't normally manage diabetes, those people have absolutely no idea how to manage insulin. And it can actually be really scary. Scary, make a scary face. Are you scared? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is Violet, my second born child. If you're wondering, how do you produce YouTube videos when you're a mom of two kids and you work full time? Sometimes you bring them with you to the video. Okay, when I was 19 years old, I had reconstructive jaw surgery. I had my top jaw chopped a little bit, my bottom jaw chopped a little bit, moved around, put in place. They put like um, titanium screws in each thing and then they wired my jaw shut using my braces. I woke up after this five hour surgery in the hospital room all by myself around like 8 p.m. My head was the size of a watermelon and I instantly started puking up blood. Again, my mouth was wired shut, so puking blood with your mouth wired shut, not a great time. Okay, so back to diabetes though. Despite all of that, I still saw the clock. It said 9 p.m. and I knew, oh my gosh, I need my daily injection of long-acting insulin. Well, the nurse is like, no, oh, I don't see that in your orders, so you can't take it without the doctor's permission. By doctor, she means jaw surgeon. And you can bet that jaw surgeons don't know a lot about diabetes. Okay, so actually this jaw surgeon saw the name of the drug and said, I've never heard of that before, don't let her take it. Yes, the jaw surgeon was not going to let me take my long acting insulin dose, which to me sounded like a death sentence. I know I wouldn't have died by morning without it, but I would be really sick on top of being really sick after having just had major surgery. So you know what I did? What? I threw a little fit. Even though my jaw was wired shut, I said, oh, I need my insulin. That's crazy that they want me to take my insulin. <laughs> I wrote a letter out. Again, this is now 9 p.m. And she read, the nurse read my letter to the surgeon over the phone. And he realized he doesn't know anything about diabetes. And he let me take my long acting insulin dose. Now you're probably thinking, well, that should have been in her orders from her diabetes care team. It was, I don't know, somewhere along the line, somebody just didn't put it in my post-surgery details. I don't know, that's not my job. But the jaw surgeon was not going to help me. If you're going into the hospital to have surgery, do not assume that any of these clinicians understand how any of your insulins work. In fact, I've heard stories of people being told, well, you're not gonna eat for the next 24 hours, so you don't need any insulin. That's not true. Talk to your diabetes healthcare team, get it down in writing, make sure everyone on that surgery team understands what's gonna happen with your insulin. Generally speaking, clinicians in the hospital who do not regularly manage insulin, basically everybody except endocrinologists and diabetes educators, these clinicians are terrified of insulin. Terrified of it because you know, a little bit too much could kill a person. Okay, so that means we appreciate that they don't wanna kill us, but often what happens instead is that we end up with really high blood sugars fighting for our own care. I don't want a blood sugar in the 300s hours after surgery, right? You've gotta speak up, you've gotta fight, you've gotta put it down in writing, speak up for yourself and make sure everybody knows what's going on or you're gonna be in the hands of people who don't know anything about insulin. All right, here's another one for you. And this one is about your big sister. Hours before your big sister was born, I had been managing my blood sugars as perfectly as possible, of course, for like nine months, but also for the two days that I was in the hospital and they were trying to induce me. They were trying to give me medicine that would make me go into labor to give birth to your sister sooner than later. 
So the people on the floor of the pregnancy birthing wing, they don't know anything about insulin and they're terrified of it. And I get it, insulin's dangerous, right? Like we talked about, yeah, it's dangerous. And I had a baby inside me. Well, they wouldn't let me correct any high blood sugars. They wouldn't let me take any additional rapid acting insulin unless my blood sugar went over 140. Now that was pretty frustrating as a person who just spent nine months trying to keep my blood sugars under 130 as much as possible for the sake of pregnancy. And then in the hours before your child is born, that's the last time that you want your blood sugar to be over 140. The higher your blood sugars are in the hours before your child is born, the more likely your child is going to experience severe low blood sugars in the hours after they are born because, are you ready for this? This is some weird science. <laughs> okay, if your blood sugars are high, the baby in your belly is getting more glucose than usual, so they're producing more insulin than usual to deal with all the extra glucose from mom's high blood sugar. But then baby is born, disconnected from that extra glucose, and now they're still producing more insulin in response to normal blood sugar levels because the baby doesn't have type one diabetes and then their blood sugars crash. So long story short, my point is that you want your blood sugars to be nearly perfect in the hours before the baby is born. Back to those clinicians who don't know anything about insulin, they weren't letting me take any insulin unless my blood sugar was gonna be over 140. I was taking little micro doses of rapid acting insulin to keep myself under 100 all day long. And they realized it and said, no, 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 you can't do that. Now I hadn't had any lows. I hadn't given them any reason to not trust me. And my A1C was awesome, blah, blah, blah. My best friend, Tara Mayo, she would do lookout in the hallway for me while I snuck to the bathroom and took little micro doses of rapid acting insulin to keep my blood sugar down at 100 instead of 150 and higher. I would prefer to have my diabetes care team write a note in my chart that says, hey, this person understands their diabetes and their insulin and they can manage their insulin during delivery day with your support. And that's actually what I got when she was being born. I had the trust of my care team because I told them about what I had to do the last time I was giving birth. And that horrified them and they realized, okay, let's work with her instead of against her. So again, this comes down to open conversation. I didn't realize no one was gonna trust me. Like I'd been managing my blood sugars while pregnant for nine months. I had no idea that they were gonna all be like, oh, you don't know how to manage insulin in the final hours of this pregnancy open conversation with your healthcare team, get stuff down in writing. By the way, we have a whole guide on pregnancy and type one diabetes right here on Amazon. This is everything you need to get yourself through preparing for pregnancy, through pregnancy itself, and there's even a whole chunk in there about breastfeeding and postpartum. Find it on Amazon. Don't even get me started about when I was pregnant with you. This kid made me so sick starting month like five or six during my pregnancy that I could not eat without vomiting because my stomach was producing so much stomach acid. I definitely gave myself some emergency glucagon during those days. Okay, one more hospital story for you. When I was like 17 or 18, my insulin pump was in my pocket while I was stringing up Christmas lights outside the movie theater where I worked. Now this was in New England, in New Hampshire, so it was like 10 degrees, maybe colder. And I didn't know it, but the temperature had killed the insulin in my pump. I woke up the next day in DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. My blood sugar was sky high, I was vomiting, I couldn't keep any water down, it was not pretty. All right, so I get to the hospital and the med students or residents or whatever they were decided they were gonna give me 10 units of rapid acting insulin per hour along with a 10 unit bolus right then. 
20 units of insulin. I was just a little teenage girl. That was way too much insulin. I was like, whoa, I've never needed that much insulin in one day, let alone all at once. I had to speak up for myself quickly. Now they were probably used to dealing with DKA here and there in the ER, right? That's not gonna be new to them. That's part of what they do. But I don't know whose doses they were determining that by. They definitely weren't looking in my insulin pump. Insulin pumps were still really new back then and CGMs did not even exist. So I was like, no, 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 please, please don't give me that much insulin all at once. That's way too much insulin. What's 10 plus 10? 20. 20 units, way too much. So I convinced them to give me half that amount. What's half? 10. 10, okay. Now what's half of 10? Five. Five. So they gave me five right then and then five that was gonna be dripped into my arm with an IV over the course of the next hour. Well, sure enough, in an hour, even with their big reduction, I was going really low. So now we're treating a low blood sugar. Long story short, Hospitals don't know how to manage insulin. You've got to speak up for yourself. You've got to be in charge. But I will tell you, you can't go crazy. You cannot. Once you lose your SHIT, they stop trusting you. You've got to stay calm and cool. You've got to establish that you know your insulin doses, that you're managing your diabetes to the best of your ability, and that you can be part of the decision-making. Stand up for yourself, speak up for yourself, stay calm, and don't let the hospital kill you with insulin mistakes.